All right, so we have already talked about resistors in series and parallel. In this video, we're going to talk about batteries in series and parallel. So what happens when you connect multiple batteries in series or parallel? How can you solve for the equivalent voltage? Or if you have a desired target voltage, how can you connect batteries to achieve that? So first, pretty simple. When you connect batteries in series, assuming you connect them end to end positive to negative. So negative end of one battery goes to the positive end of the next battery and so on. Then their voltages add. So kind of think of this like resistors in series, although it's not really the same thing. We'll talk about this more when we talk about Kirchhoff's voltage law in a future video. Voltages add in series. So for example, if you have V1, V2, and V3, and you were to measure the total voltage VEQ between those outer two terminals, VEQ, actually let's call that VN, and as usual, say you had more batteries in there, VEQ is just gonna be V1 plus V2 plus up to VN, or using summation notation, the sum from I equals one to N, of V sub I. So voltages add when you connect batteries in series. That is again, assuming you don't get them flipped. So if you connect positive to positive like this, then the voltages are not gonna add. They're actually gonna cancel out. So don't do that. And one common place you might see this is in battery packs or toys that take multiple AA or AAA batteries. Say so they're usually arranged in sets of say four like this, where they're kind of alternating direction with the positive connection on one end like this. And that's because there are little bits of metal inside the battery pack that connect the positive end of one battery to the negative end of the next battery. So this is another good case where you don't wanna get physical and electrical arrangements mixed up. These are physically or geometrically in parallel with each other, but electrically they're in series with each other. So for example, for AA batteries, each individual battery is 1.5 volts. And when you combine four of them in series like that, you get a total of six volts on the two wires that connect the external um, connections to the battery pack. So say you have some batteries available and you have some desired target voltage, but you don't have a power supply or a battery that provides that voltage on its own. For example, say you have a bunch of six volt lantern batteries. These are those big ones you might see in um, some large flashlights or lanterns, but you need something that's 12 volts. Well, you could get that by connecting two of those batteries in series, positive to negative. So if I connect two six volt batteries in series like that, then I'm going to get a total of 12 volts between the two outer wires, or again, if I drew the circuit diagram for that, and that is putting two six volt batteries in series like this, where I am going to get a total of 12 volts between their outer terminals because those voltages add. Now let's switch over to batteries in parallel. So say if I connect two batteries in parallel like this, and in this case, the voltages are the same. This is an important one not to get confused about. So it is not like, it does not work like putting resistors in parallel. So if you remember from an earlier video, when you add multiple resistors in parallel, the total resistance goes down. That's not how this works. When you connect batteries in parallel, the voltages are the same. So if I put two AA batteries in parallel with each other, and each AA battery is 1.5 volts, so 1.5, 1.5. If I connect these positive to positive and negative to negative like this and measure the output, I still get 1.5 volts out here. Again, that's equivalent to drawing the circuit diagram here and measuring the equivalent output voltage there. So do not think about it like resistors. You don't follow that inverse equation, where it's one over R1 plus one over R2. Batteries are not resistors, okay? Don't do this. So of course, this inevitably always leads people to ask, well, wait a minute, if those voltages have to be the same because they're in parallel, well, what happens if you connect two batteries of different voltages? What if I take a nine volt battery and put it in parallel with a 1.5 volt 
double A battery. Those voltages can't be the same because I have two different battery voltages, but you're telling me these voltages have to be the same because they're in parallel. So what happens? And the answer is very bad things. Okay, so we have been treating batteries as ideal so far. We haven't really talked about battery internal resistance, but in reality, there is actually a very, very tiny resistance in series with each battery. It has some internal resistance to current flow. And if you remember Ohm's law, V equals IR. So what we have here now is a voltage difference. We have nine volts there and we only have 1.5 volts here. So we have some voltage difference between those two points with a very, very tiny resistance between them. And what happens if we solve Ohm's law for I equals V over R? So we have some known value for V and then we have some really, really, really tiny R. Well, that is going to give us a really, really big current. We're dividing some number by a very, very tiny number. That means I is gonna be really, really big. So if you happen to do this and connect two different voltage batteries in parallel like that, what that means is you're actually gonna get some very huge current from one battery into another and that is bad okay so don't connect different voltage batteries in parallel with each other write that out in red here don't do that it's bad. In practice, the reason you would want to do this is to get more life out of each battery. So again, we haven't really talked about Kirchhoff's current law, law yet, but when you combine, for example, two batteries in series like this and have, I'll draw this out again. So you have a single battery with current going through some load, like a resistor. If you add another battery in parallel to the first one, the voltage is the same, so the voltage drop over this resistor is the same, the current through the resistor is the same, but now you only need one half of that current from each battery since you've added a second battery in parallel. So these batteries for a given capacity are now going to last twice as long. So if you need your batteries to last longer and you don't have bigger batteries available, again, thinking about common household batteries like AAA, and double A, which is a little bigger, going up to the, the huge D batteries, these are all the same voltage. These are all 1.5 volts, but the difference is the D battery is much bigger and is going to last much longer. So if you need your batteries to last longer, one option is to go up to a bigger battery like a D battery. The other option is to combine more smaller batteries in parallel. But again, you don't, for example, want to mix these 1.5 volt batteries in parallel with a 9 volt battery because then you're going to have this mismatch and you're going to get a large amount of current that's potentially going to overheat or make the batteries explode. And one final note here, since we're talking about batteries and internal resistance, you've probably noticed that most toys and devices and things tell you not to mix old and new batteries, and this is why. As a battery ages, its voltage begins to drop and its internal resistance increases. So you can run into a scenario where one battery is dissipating more heat than one of the others and kind of unheating asymmetrically or actually kind of acting as a load to the other batteries as they try to force current through it if they're in series or it, if its voltage starts to drop, it will actually draw current from the other batteries which gets diverted from the load. So that is why you always wanna start with fresh batteries instead of mixing and swapping in one battery at a time to kind of keep their voltage and their internal resistance all at the same level.